Good morning, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. We do rejoice and are glad and excited in it. We welcome you today to our kickoff sermon and our kickoff uh, service for our 250th anniversary. We have with us today a wonderful, wonderful surprise, a speaker who is part of our tradition. And I'll let uh, Reverend uh, Burkett, Reverend Cindy, introduce her during the time, but we just want you to, to be fully present today in service. Let the Lord minister to you as we are truly looking for a true spiritual life. Let us all bow our hearts and our spirits in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this day that you have made. We do rejoice and are excited in this day. God, there has never been a day like today, a day of new possibilities, a day of new promises, and a day that your grace is sufficient for us today. God, we pray that you bless and be with everyone who is present today, every family member and everyone who wishes to be here. And for all of those who are worshiping in wherever their places of worship are today. God, we pray that in these virtual services and even in places where people are live, that you walk with us, open our ears and our hearts to hear your word today. Bless the woman of God who is bringing your word today, God. Fill us, fill her with your spirit and your power. Allow her to speak to us a word in due season because God, we need you every hour. We thank you, God, for all of these wonderful things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Today, we continue our journey of faith through the season of Lent. And today, and today we, begin we begin the, the celebration, celebration of another, another journey, journey of faith. A journey begun 250 years ago, before we were even a nation. When immigrants still clung to the languages of their homelands, a movement of faith was rooted in this place. They set themselves down here and said, We, we see we seek the truth spiritual, spiritual life. 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 Like the earliest Christians, they were devoted to their spiritual lives, to acts of mercy and to worship. They built a wooden structure, welcomed the Methodists to organize here, built a brick edifice that stands today. They inspired others to claim the faith they professed, founded a denomination, and through the years joined with other like-minded Christians to form the church we claim today as home. As a loving and steadfast God changed the names of Abram and Sarai to Abraham and Sarah, so the names by which Christians in this place knew themselves have changed. Uh, first, simply Bruder. In 1800, United Brethren in Christ. From 1946, they were Evangelical United Brethren. From, From 1968, 1968 until, until today, today United, United Methodists. They endured war and scourged of slavery on our land. They experienced a city destroying fire and a pandemic. They joined their voices with the cries of those seeking justice. They lived through times of abundance and times of great want through the need for confession and repentance and during times of assurance, through times of fear and despair, as well as times of hope, joy, 
and gladness. They, they could, they could not, not have imagined, imagined our, our celebration, celebration today, today. But, but they, they trust in God, in God who was leading them, them blessing, blessing them, them, assuring them, assuring them of, a of a future as yet, as yet unknown. unknown. And so too, we trust in God who continues to lead us, bless us, challenge us, welcome us. And we join our voices saying, let, let, us, let us praise, praise and thank our loving, loving God. God. Let, us, let celebrate. us celebrate. Let us worship. Let us worship. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on its face. And I know that it's the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Let us all greet one another with these words. May the peace of Christ, so Christ be, be with, with you. And, and also with you. With you. Lent calls us to worship together, to tell future generations the good news. Lent calls us to practice justice, to bring God's hope to all people. Lent calls us to faithful living, to trust the one who gives us life. Lent calls each of us to take up our cross, to trust the one who bears. Lent calls us to journey yes, with God. With us. Let us worship God who walks with us this and every day. This and every day. And please join me at home with your mics muted. We're going to sing, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing in United Methodist Hymnal number 57.
Jesus calls us to deny ourselves, calls each of us to take up our cross, calls us to follow him. Yet we trust in our works rather than in God's grace. We would rather cling to what we know than allow our selfishness and sin to be put to death. We fear where faith will lead and what it might change in our lives. In this moment of silence, we confess the sin that separates us from one another and from God. People of God, hear the good news. God's covenant with us is true. God is faithful even when we fail. Through the Holy Spirit, God gives us the gift of faith and makes us righteous. Believe in the good news that you are set free to live as children of God. Amen. And thanks be to God. And our prayer response today will be found also in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 465, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine, 465. Aaron, please unmute yourself. What, the Old Testament lesson uh, comes from Genesis 17, one through seven, 15 and 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. 
You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be able ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generation for an ex everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Our gospel lesson is from Mark chapter eight, verses 31 through 38. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then he began to teach them that the son of man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called to the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel, will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, brothers and sisters. And I want to extend an especial welcome to our guests who are joining us today. This is a day that we've been planning and hoping for for a very long time, uh, beginning our planning all the way back in 2019 so that we might have a, uh, an appropriate celebration to honor this 250th anniversary of that group of faithful people who were in Baltimore, who wanted to uh, live that true spiritual life and who set themselves down at the corner of what is now Conway and Sharp Streets bought property, built structures, and said, this is our home. And we owe them so much. We are connected by a chain of relationship across the denomination, across our nation, and especially to those who come out of the uh, strands of faith, the United Brethren in Christ and the Evangelical United Brethren who are um, look to Old Otterbein United Methodist Church as their mother church. I am privileged to introduce today our guest preacher, Reverend Dr. Terry Ray Chatton. I first knew uh, TR, as she prefers to be called, back when I was not even called to ministry yet. I was uh, living in Millersville, Maryland. I was the uh, director of a food pantry and assistance network. And I remember one of our volunteers, Grace Lohman, TR, reminded me this morning telling me how much she loved her pastor because she had learned to really read the Bible. She'd never really known how to read the Bible before. And Grace was so excited that uh, she had been led by a pastor who encouraged that in her. And so that was my first introduction. Uh, 
uh, Reverend Chatton grew up in Plainville, Indiana. She was baptized and confirmed in the Evangelical United Brethren Church. And for 39 years, she served in many appointment settings within the Baltimore Washington Conference, including pastoring local churches, serving as the Frederick District Superintendent and as Associate Council Director for Youth and Advocacy. Her specific ministries led to over 35 years of participation in United Methodist camping and, uh, and retreat ministries, especially at Manadokan and West River. She also traveled extensively throughout the United Methodist Connection, including teaching at Africa University's Pastors School. And with a heart for justice, she was privileged to be part of the beginnings of a ministry that continues to this day, even in time of pandemic, the quality of life retreats for persons living with HIV, and also a founding member of the conference chapter of the Methodist Federation for Social Action, which I'm privileged to be a part of now. And so thank you for that founding work and for your constant encouragement. I knew Reverend Chatton mostly as an encourager. She knew me before I answered my call to ministry and before I had taken to heart that uh, verse from the Charles Wesley hymn, the fourth verse that we sang this morning, he breaks the power of canceled sin. When I didn't yet belong, believe in myself, her easy and gracious confidence in me as a woman called to ministry helped me to get through to that next level so that I could indeed answer God's call on my life. And I give thanks to this day for that encouragement that I received. The conference has also shown confidence in her leadership and has made uh, her many times, seven times jurisdictional delegate, six times our general conference delegate, twice leading or co-leading the delegations with the person elected from the lay side in 2012 and 2016. And if you don't know what it means to co-lead a delegation, it means that she was the first person elected as a delegate to general conference. She's now a retired elder in the conference and she continues to serve the denomination and to volunteer for quality of life retreats and for camping and mission projects. We are so grateful to have you with us today and for your ready response of yes when we invited you to be our inaugural preacher in this anniversary celebration year. So I'm going to uh, just turn to Reverend Chatton and invite you to bless us with your message today. Well, good morning. And Good morning to everyone and let us begin with a prayer. We give thanks, O God, for the witness of your holy scripture. Bless, we pray, our hearing of your word this day. Speak to each of us and speak to all of us and grant that by the power of your spirit, we may be hearers and doers of your word. Amen. Well, I want to give thanks to uh, Reverend Cindy for that introduction. And uh, also want to give uh, thanks to, uh, I was talking to uh, Reverend Doctor, uh, who says call her Pastor Rancy uh, before the service. Want to give thanks to her for allowing me uh, to be in the pulpit here at Old Otterbein today. And I have been over the last several weeks when I knew I was going to preach with you all, uh, been going on Facebook and observing uh, your worship services. Uh, and certainly I have been very blessed. I went on once to see what it's like and then I just kept going back each week. So thank you for that. And thank you, Pastor Irancy, for your messages that you have given to us. I'm thrilled to be here this morning. And I know that uh, Reverend Cindy had asked the question what is it that, um, what, what does Old Otterbein mean to you? Well, I'm not a member of Old Otterbein, but I can certainly speak to what it means to be an EUB. I grew up in the EUB church. My grandparents were actually united brethren in Christ. I can remember as a small child sitting on the piano bench as my mother, the church musician, played for church. My dad was up in front assisting the pastor. I remember definitely uh, as a teenager the day I was baptized and confirmed on the same day. 
I remember midweek Bible studies. I remember the Ladies' Aid Society. I remember annual revivals when the evangelists would come. Um, also the organ, the backdrop today, that's the pump organ from the Plainville EUB Church. When we merged and became United Methodist, we went to the Methodist building, but we kept the EUB parsonage. I also have with me today another real gem. This is the 1890 Otterbine Hymnal. And I want to read you just a couple of sentences from the introduction. It says, it is preeminently a United Brethren hymn book, providing as it does for every phase of our characteristic church life. It combines the solidity and the stateliness of the standard hymns of the ages with the life and sprightliness of the modern gospel song. The most recent songs are here for the young people, while the older members of the church will hail with delight the reappearance of those old and dear songs to their hearts of so many of us, because they are precious and good, and because our mothers sang them. I think the most important thing though about my EUB upbringing that meant the most was that from the very beginning, there were women as pastors. We were blessed in Plainville United Methodist that three sisters, Eva, Bertha, and Teresa, all lay pastors in the EUB church, they all decided to retire in Plainville and they decided, they decided to come to our church. So as a young child, I saw women in the pulpit. I saw women doing everything in the church, which I'm sure had a great, well, I know that it had a great effect on me and my call to ministry. You all are celebrating 250 years here at Old Otterbein. My goodness, what a legacy. And you've gone through all the many phases of what you've been as a congregation. And actually the other thing I find amazing, you are the oldest edifice in Baltimore City that's had continual worship. What a, what a statement. You've always had a missionary spirit that I read reaching out and establishing other United Brethren in Christ churches. You always had a vital interest in foreign missions. And today, you're a reconciling congregation. All are included. You reach out to the community and those in needs with what you put on your fence as hats and gloves and all different ways. You provide monies. This time, I think you're giving to a legal uh, association to help folks with debt and other things. So quite a legacy that you have. And you also had the distinction of Philip William Otterbein serving you for 39 years. Now it's said from the very beginning that Philip William Otterbein could preach with zeal, energy, and earnestness. He also didn't hesitate to attack the evils and corruption of his day, including in the church. Sometimes that meant he wasn't invited inside <laughs> to preach. He'd have to preach maybe in the courtyard or barn or grove. So today, Let's look at this scripture, this Linton lectionary scripture that you follow. Let's look at it with zeal, energy, and earnestness for what it means for us. But I also want you to know that I won't preach near as long as I think Otterbein might have preached on this passage, even though I know he would have loved it. Fan or follower? Fan or follower? I don't know if you know what the initials DTR stand for? I didn't really know it until recently when I was reading. It stands for define the relationship. Define the relationship. In our Lenten text today, we see Jesus defining his relationship with God. 
and asking the disciples about defining their relationship. A fan or a follower. This passage is really the transition passage in the Gospel of Mark. We've had the Galilean ministry of Jesus, and now we're moving toward Jerusalem. I don't think it's by accident that it takes place in Caesarea Philippi either. You know, and if you look on a map, Caesarea Philippi is really out of the way. This was not a direct route for the disciples from their Galilean ministry to Jerusalem. But I think it happened there because this is, Caesarea Philippi was the birth, uh, the Greeks thought it was the birthplace for, the, for their God of nature. There was Baal worship. In Jesus' time, there was even a magnificent temple that had been built to honor Caesar Augustus. So I think it was intentional that Jesus took the disciples through Caesarea Philippi, because you see, just a few verses earlier, before we get to this part of the passage, this part of the chapter, he asked them, who do people think I am and who do you say that I am? And Peter has that spiritual breakthrough, that turning point, when he says, you are the Messiah. And Jesus then goes on to talk about what's going to come ahead. You know, the fun and games are over. The Galilean ministry is over now. We're going to march into to trials and troubles and agony. He foretells his death and what's to come. Jesus has made his decision to follow God's will. And now it's time for the disciples to understand what the decision is to follow him. I guess in a way, now's the time to break out of it if you want to. <laughs> if you just wanna say, audio's got a roll, now's the time. Peter, of course, protests what Jesus says and Jesus corrects him. And then to the disciples and to the crowd gathered, he begins to teach them what it really means to be a follower. He says they have to deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Now, it's interesting in the Greek, deny, take up, follow, are all present active imperatives. Think about that, present active imperatives. Deny, take up, and follow. Deny and take up. Jesus giving us the direction we must go and follow being the actual living of that. And in the Greek, that follow means to take the same road as another does. So Jesus says, you're not following behind, but you need to be accompanying me on this road. You need to be accompanying me. And being a Christian does involve a decision and it involves an individual sense a decision. We can't, we don't follow Jesus on somebody else's coattails. What's that song? Give me that old time religion. I mean, it was good enough for Paul, good enough for Silas, whatever. Can't remember all the names, but it's our own personal decision. We're the ones that have to decide. And it doesn't matter when or how, it's just that we make that decision. Are we going to be a fan or a follower? Are we going to be an enthusiastic admirer of Jesus? Or are we going to be a committed follower? What, how do we define our relationship? What's our DTR? Well, once we've defined that and made that decision, it's really not the end. Remember, it's a present active. It's only really just begun. And that's when this passage, this is a hard passage for us to hear, really. Deny, take up your cross, follow me. And then Jesus goes on to say, if you want to save your life, you've got to lose it. Well, I don't like to hear about losing. 
And frankly, in this season of COVID, everybody's lost enough. Over 500,000 deaths. People may go into foreclosure or be evicted if they don't get help. Folks have lost their job. We've lost the ability to touch. Now we have to do an elbow or a little foot tap. We've lost the ability to, to gather together with those that we love or for those things that we enjoy. So to hear about loss, the great statesman Winston Churchill made this statement. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give, by what we give. You see, who Jesus is is really reflected by our lives. It's both a demand and it's a gift. The gospel of Jesus Christ offers not a comfy answer to the felt needs of our self-centered culture, but the truth that our world so desperately needs to hear. The way of Jesus is the way of suffering. But let me make it clear, it's not suffering for suffering's sake. That's not what this means. Not suffering for suffering's sake. It is suffering that comes as a result of our willingness to risk loving God and our neighbors, no matter what the cost. I wanna say that again, because I think it's the most important sentence in the whole sermon. It is suffering that comes as a result of our, wit our willingness to risk loving God and our neighbors, no matter what the cost. It is suffering that comes from loving. If we lose our lives in service to Christ and Christ's kingdom, we will find a life beyond our imagining. Nothing else compares. We only find life when we have the courage to give it away. Following Jesus costs everything and gives everything. There's no halfway about it. Maybe the best illustration, I was talking to a friend not too long ago who expressed to me that uh, she was a vegetarian. But then she went on to say, yep, I'm a vegetarian, but sometimes I like to eat pork. I'm like, that's not a vegetarian. That's what I'd call a flexitarian. And I think that oftentimes in our walk, we can be flexitarians. But Jesus is asking us to be, well, pure and to follow, not just a fan, but a follower, a consistent, committed follower. Phrases like, I want, I'm going to, I will, I need are simply no longer part of our vocabulary because we began to say words like Jesus once. Jesus is going to, Jesus will, or I guess the modern phrase now is what would Jesus do? WWJD. Well, the scripture doesn't stop there. There's one more part. <laughs> and that's that verse 38, where Jesus ends by saying, those who are ashamed of me and of my words, of then the Son of Man will also be ashamed. I guess the question is, are you ashamed of the gospel? Are you ashamed of the gospel? Are you afraid of inviting friends and neighbors and others to church for fear they'll think you're strange or weird or pushy? I've had those times when I may have had an opportunity and I didn't speak up? Or are, are you afraid of, we may wanna reach out into our communities when we see there's needs, but yet there's a part of us that's afraid to do that because it takes us into a place we've never been for more and is very uncomfortable and very unfamiliar to us. Or 
maybe we want to let others know about the power of Jesus Christ in our lives, but we just don't know how to communicate it. I don't think you're alone if you've answered yes to any of that. Sometimes we're timid. Sometimes we lack the courage. Sometimes we're afraid because we don't want to be embarrassed. But I do think that God expects us of it, expects that of us. I think that when I fail to share my faith, when I have an opportunity, when someone asks, or when someone, particularly if someone asks, well, what, what did you do for a living? I think that God would be disappointed if I don't share who I am. I think when I see a need and I just pass by, I think God is disappointed. I think if I see an injustice and I don't speak out, I think God is disappointed. But there is good news. There is good news. God can change even me and help me to do it right the next time. God can change even you. What is that wonderful song? Uh, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me and use me. God can can change us and move us. What is our DTR? How do we define our relationship with Jesus Christ? And for old Otterbein, you've had 250 years of defining who you are. What a legacy. And what, I can't even imagine all the saints in that, in 250 years who have lost their lives for Christ, who have denied themselves and how this congregation has reached out into the community. And I know you're continuing to do that and will do that as you continue in your missions and your social justice ministries and your inclusion in all the ways. You have for 250 years defined your relationship. But remember, those deny, take up, and follow, they were all present, active imperatives. So the call is still there today to be a follower of Jesus Christ. May God bless your congregation, Old Otterbein, and may each of us, may each of us look at our relationship today and decide how we want to define it for Jesus Christ. Amen. I would say the hymn that's coming up, I know you're going to introduce it maybe. It was from the E. Oh, good. Going to put it up there. All right, exactly what you were just saying is from the EUB hymnal, uh, which we no longer have or use. Um, but this is a lovely hymn. I will sing the wondrous story. So please join me um, at home in your hearts with your with your mics muted.
Amen. Amen. That was absolutely outstanding and, and blessed. And we have to understand that we are called to be followers of Christ. Amen. This is now time for our offering. We do respond to God's word through our faithful giving. And you, O Audubon, have been giving, giving and are givers, not just for the 250 years, but for now. Your offering can be um, sent in our uh, webpage link that is here. You can also go to our Facebook page and our webpage to donate. And we appreciate all of your giving because the Lord does love a faithful giver. forward to the day that we can sing that doxology together and have our amen um, in uh, harmony. Amen. This is the time for our prayer and our prayer concerns. Um, we are continuing to pray for those in our prayer list. We would ask that you would print out our prayer list, which is at the end of our uh, bulletin, and continue to pray heartily. Many of the people who have been in our prayer list before, God has continued to answer prayer as God always does. But as prayer is, we always are continuing to add to our prayer list. And we thank you. We thank you, Old Audubon, to continue to pray. As you can see, our prayer concerns now are really in bold. Um, so again, print them out. When you wake up in the morning, in time of your morning devotional, continue to pray for those, pray for our country and pray for our nation. We're inviting um, you, um, if you have our, um, our um, announcements now, we will continue our virtual worship services. Um, we are continuing to uh, develop and our plans, we are looking forward to maybe the summer or the fall to worship in, um, in person, person. As you know, with our 250, we're, uh, the, the bishop has been invited. So we are really praying and looking forward to being able to worship in person by the fall. So continue to keep us, keep our community, keep our world in prayer as we're looking forward to open up and um, having a new normal, not the same normal, but the new normal. Um, for our giving, we're asking you, uh, you, you may mail your check or again, go online to the old audubon 250org donate to continue to uh, send in your, uh, your giving online. You can always remember that um, as we have our, we are in, uh, ministry with organizations that uh, part of your donations, if you would give us a little bit extra, because we do give every um, quarter organizations who we are in fellowship with. So just um, um, our first quarter mission is the Pro Bono Resource Center of Maryland. They're, they are a fabulous organization um, and they uh, send lawyers to support uh, the, the uh, role in rent, rent court and also for, um, for uh, eviction, evictions and for those who are having issues and recognize pro bono means that 
for the people who uh, partake of this, it is free, but the ministry itself cost. So if you would um, consider um, giving a small offering to the pro, pro bono, this, what you give, we put together and we send to them every quarter. We do have noonday prayer and on Wednesday still, the number is the 701 number. Um, we have enjoyed praying with you and every noonday until we're over, um, you can uh, call in. The call is free to you and I'm looking forward to hearing from you, amen. Um, if you are uh, shopping on Amazon, and unfortunately for some of us, that is the things that we do because we're still in partial quarantine. Please consider donating um, Old Audubon in your Amazon Smile uh, charity. A percentage of what you buy goes to Old Audubon and just look up Old Audubon Baltimore United Methodist Church. It costs you nothing but it is still uh, giving to the church. And we, as you can see, we're continuing to be in ministry and mission with our community. And your gifts have allowed us um, to continue to function, function well, and be able to list, uh, uh, reach out to our citizens in need. As you can see, we're still uh, pull it, putting uh, uh, masks and bags um, in our fences. And as you know, and, and June has reminded us that soon there will be a plastic ban. Um, and when that is, we will continue to put bags still on our fence. It has hats and gloves and water and granola bars and nutritious snacks for our unhoused neighbor. Uh, if you would like to be a part of our um, angels, um, then you can reach out to, to Mimi or, um, uh, or Betty or June, and you can donate, donate and bring it to the parsonage. And we appreciate the donations that you, we've already uh, uh, given and we've been giving out. So amen to all of you, amen. We would, we, ah, um, and I'm sure uh, Reverend Cindy is going to, to let you know, and we have, uh, I think, pictures now posted on Facebook um, on how Audubon has affected you. Um, these, um, these are now posted on our uh, fence um, that what uh, uh, Audubon has been to you, a sacred family, a safe haven, these are quotes for people who are, have been part of uh, Old Audubon, encouraging me to be the best version of me. So we would like for you to share your Old Audubon story. Um, if you would like to, to share, then please let uh, Betty Colby, Colby, who is our Director of Missions to know, and we'll continue to, um, uh, uh, to have you tell your story and your testimony you don't really know how much you have, how much you may help others by your testimony. So we would still like you to have a time to just say, they came, I came to Old, Old Audubon and I was looking for something else, but when I got here, I found a home. So please share your Old Audubon uh, story. And thank you very much for Reverend Cindy. I see your hand, amen. If you stay on worship until the very end, the very last slide has the other signs that are up. I am thankful for um, Betty Colby and Daniel Fisher who helped to uh, put the signs up yesterday afternoon. And if you are in downtown Baltimore, drive around the church and you'll see the signs. Uh, two sets are facing the convention center, one on the parking lot side, one on the Conway Street side. And then they're also near the back gate, uh, near the garden entrance um, on the, um, on the Sharp Street side, so, uh, or I have those backwards, but anyhow, Conway and Sharp Street, there's signs on both sides. So, um, but do continue to share your stories. You may recognize something that you said a few weeks ago when we asked you to finish the statement, Old Otterbein is, and we wanna continue to collect those testimonies because those are testimonies in a phrase. And I made sure that the one was about that was about healing was on the convention center side where people are receiving their COVID vaccines and where we anticipate people may be lining up as the 
as the vaccine rollout continues and there's more available. So uh, I just want you to know that you are a part of this, even if you don't ever go downtown to see the signs, there are signs on our fence telling the world that we're having a birthday and we are more than just a church. So thank you for your confidence in that process. The Lenten Bible studies, we, we had a great uh, Bible study this Thursday, um, and it is every 30, Thursday up until April 1st. Um, if for some reason you didn't get the book, is an ebook or a, um, a book, how the Bible study is um, facilitated, you don't necessarily need it. Um, it helps you for uh, reflection. But the questions are more, uh, uh, more for you and more for discussion. So please come and be a part of our next one, which is, uh, which is this Thursday, March 4th. Uh, it is from seven to eight exactly. And we want you all to come and be a part of it. You will find that as we're looking at ourselves in terms of the fear of the other, we realize that there truly is no fear in love and God is the truly the only other. And so we're learning um, how to reflect God in everything that we do and how we think and the people that uh, we meet during the day. So I invite you to our Bible study. The next one is the March 4th um, at seven o'clock. This is the link. And the link is on our Facebook page as well. If you um, don't know or you, you haven't, can't find the link, just um, connect to us on the Facebook page or the info at Old Audubon and we can still send you the link. So we look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Amen. So it is now um, greater than we can understand, vaster than we can imagine and more amazing than we can put into words. So with awe and deep gratitude, we pray as you all unmute yourself together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Be thy, name. Thy, kingdom thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will, be, done. will be done on earth, on earth as it is as in it heaven. Is in heaven. Give us this day, this day our, daily bread. our daily bread and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we, as we forgive, those forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the kingdom the power, and the power and the glory forever. 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 Amen. 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 And if you could please join me, our final hymn will be found in the faith we sing, number 2130, The Summons.
benediction and sending forth. Go in God's power that moves through acts of faith. Open your ear to God's divine revelations. Depend on God who is wise beyond the laws of this land and do all of these things so that all that is right and good permeates each day until we meet again. Amen. Amen. We invite you all to stay online as we go into a time of fellowship. And if you'll stay for one second more, at least I'm going to change the slide and you can see the rest of the signs that are on our fences now. And again, many thanks to the, uh, the team that created this worship that has been working on our events for this anniversary year to our readers and leaders, to our pastor, and especially our heartfelt thanks to you, uh, Reverend Chatton. You have blessed us beyond measure and we're so grateful. And I wanna share with the church that not only is uh, Reverend Chatton, our preacher today for our inaugural 250th worship, but she is also working with us on our anniversary celebration team. And we're so grateful for her willingness to be a part of that team. Thanks be to God. So stay with us and we'll have a little time of fellowship. Mm -hmm.